so glad you have joined me as we continue a conversation about acids and bases. In this clip, I want to talk about acid-base neutralizations. Uh, I'm going to fill in those blanks in just a minute. I want you to see the reaction first. This is a type of double replacement reaction, and we are going to assume that all solutions are aqueous unless specified otherwise. So that'll save us a little bit. So if I have nitric acid plus potassium hydroxide, all acids and bases are stoichiometry till the limiting runs out, regardless of strengths. We would treat those as more of a stoichiometry calculation than an equilibrium, although that transition from one to the other is a little gray. I think we're pretty safe ground with this one. Okay, so potassium cation is going to go with a new anion, so I'll get potassium nitrate. That gives an H plus to go with an OH minus, and we'll get water out of that. So you'll find we always form an ionic compound, which is a salt. So a salt and water. An ionic compound and water. Okay, now a question is, is every neutralization going to end up at pH 7? Well, that's a, an answer or conversation to be had in a higher level video in AP, IB, or college chemistry. Okay, so now let's look at the next one. Calcium hydroxide plus phosphoric acid. And I'll get calcium phosphate. And if you know your solubility rules, you would know that calcium phosphate would precipitate as a solid. And then we would get water. And we're going to have to balance that. Okay? So just a double replacement. Calcium cation went with the new phosphate anion. The H plus goes with the OH minus to form water double replacement. Not too bad, I hope. Now let's do some calculations with these. The calculation harkens back to your stoichiometry unit, which is typically done before acids and bases. So I have calcium hydroxide, and I'm going to titrate it with hydrochloric acid to make calcium chloride plus water. Okay, now I like to write my givens underneath. So with calcium hydroxide, I have 45.8 milliliters, and it's a 0.5 molar solution. I'll deal with sig figs at the end. And HCl, I have 25 milliliters, and I need to know its molarity. So we want to get to the mole road, and then we can go moles to moles, now at that point, you're going to have to hop out of the stoichiometry and plug it into a formula. So let's go ahead and do this. 45.8 milliliters. I'm going to be very explicit on this one. Not sure how much work your um, professor or teacher requires. And now I've got 0.5 moles of calcium hydroxide for every one liter. That's what molarity means. You can use molarity as a conversion factor just like we've used density for example. Now I need my mole ratio. I'm, it's going to require two moles of hydrochloric acid for every one mole of calcium hydroxide. Okay, so that gives us our moles. We're going to plug those moles into our molarity formula. So molarity is going to be 4.58 times 10 to the minus 2 moles. And my volume is 0.025 liters. So my final answer for that one is 1.83 molar. Don't forget your units. 1.83 molar. Okay, so traditional stoichiometry. 
Now, we have another one. Let me work that other one. And then I'm going to show you a way to do this that I call Cheaty Cheaty Voom Voom. Okay, so I've got um, H3PO4, so I'm going to go ahead and write the balanced equation. I'm going to assume that you know how to get that. Strontium hydroxide. I'll make another solid, strontium phosphate. I like phosphate because it gives us nice um, mole ratios to work with. You may not like those mole ratios, but as a teacher, I love those mole ratios. Okay, and then six waters. Okay, so again, we would do the same thing. I like to list my givens underneath and my molarity. And then for strontium hydroxide, I have 45 milliliters and a 0.75 molar solution. So we could do the same thing here. We could go milliliters to liters and then to moles. And then we could go moles to moles and then hop out of our dimensional analysis to calculate the molarity. And I'll go ahead and do that. We'd have, I'm going to take a quick, um, not show all of my work there. You should be able to do this, but be careful. I have kiddos do this all the time and go the wrong direction. Times 0.75 moles per one liter of the strontium hydroxide. Now this time it's three moles of H3PO4 for every two moles, excuse me, it's, I have that backwards, sorry about that, that's two to three, two to three moles of strontium hydroxide. Okay, so that's going to give us moles, and once we have those moles, we're going to plug those into the molarity formula, and those moles were 2.25 times 10 to the minus 2 over my volume of acid, which was 50 milliliters, or 0 0.050 liters, and I got 0 0.45 molar. Okay, wow. It's a lot of writing. My hand aches a little bit on that one. I'm going to show you a way to do this. I have a love-hate relationship with this way of doing it. Something I call cheaty, cheaty, voom, voom. What we're going to do is you take moles of your H+, plus, not your acid, your H+. Plus. So let me rewrite that. So it's your moles of H+, plus in your acid times your volume of acid, times your molarity of acid, voom, like voom voom, that's how I teach dilution is voom voom. And then I have my volume of base, my molarity of base, times my moles of hydroxide in my base. Okay, so if I did it this way, I have three H pluses in my PO, H3PO4, my volume of acid is 50. An advantage of this is as long as the volumes are the same on both sides, I don't have to convert to liters. It's kind of like a Boyle's Law or a dilution calculation. So my volume of base was 45. My molarity of base is 0.75. My moles of hydroxide is 2. Okay, so now all I have to do is solve for my molarity of acid. And my molarity of acid is, again, 0 0.545 molar, assuming I have done all my math correctly. So always double check. Now, here's what I tell my students, is that if you're going to do this, you need to show that mole ratio, which seems a little hidden, but it's in there. You need to show that mole ratio, even if it's one-to-one. -one. Otherwise, if you're taking an AP or IB test, the reader may think you're using a dilution and don't really understand your problem. So make sure you show that mole ratio, even if it's one-to-one. -one. Okay, hope I was able to help you along in your journey. Good luck.